you're in this place, it is a vast wilderness, what's out there? You know, you just don't know. Gus, a fibrous diet is of the utmost importance at high altitude. You hear me? This is our friend Gus. He missed his doctor's appointment. I'm gonna have to reschedule a really important doctor's appointment. This is the Davis Mountains Preserve in the heart of the Davis Mountains. The Davis Mountains are a sky island ecology. And that means it's a mountainous region that's completely surrounded by a desert sea. And the assemblage of plants and animals here are unique. Every sky island is a little different. Over the last several thousand years, that assemblage has developed in isolation because a lot of the, uh, especially the smaller animals and certainly the plants, can't move to the other mountain ranges. So the sky islands are important just because each one of them has a unique biodiversity. It's like reeling in web. He has his face pretty big. <laughs> he has his fangs just sunk into the guy's thorax. We have some things that are found here, only here in Texas, and in some cases, only here in the entire United States, and in a few cases, only in the world. Texas is a huge state. But there's only a few aspen stands in the whole state, and we have several of them right here on the preserve. This is a, a living laboratory. We have about 33,000 acres here, and we have a lot of research projects going on at any given time. We don't just own the land and keep people from developing it. The Nature Conservancy actively works to make the land better and try to return it to a more natural condition when we can, as resources allow, so that we can uh, keep the biodiversity and even improve the level of biodiversity. The primary benefit of the thinning project is gonna to be to improve the ponderosa pine stands up in the high elevations uh, by reducing the competition for water by getting rid of a lot of the small and medium sized trees. That's going to benefit those ponderosas and in turn it will benefit species that uh, like open ponderosa stands like the Mexican spotted owl. We have the wolf den caves where uh, there's a, a small natural rock that looks very similar to Baldy Peak on Mount Livermore that several hundred years ago, um, maybe, a, maybe even a thousand years ago or more, uh, Paleo Indians painted that thing and, and no one is really sure what the spiritual significance of that is, but it was probably some kind of a ritual site. Tonight is the full moon, which is an auspicious sign. So we decided to hike up to Wolf Den at sunset. Paleo Indian rock shelter. Uh, you're truly out in the wilderness when you hike off in this place, and you're on your own. And you could see a bear or a mountain lion, and we frequently see many other kinds of wildlife. All the places you can go in the United States, this is this is very isolated. Uh, there's already little human activity out here um, in the way of towns and, and people, 
and, and this is just that much more removed. So if you're trying to get in touch with the natural world, this is a great place to be. We're, we're creatures of the daytime and, and it's, uh, it can be intimidating enough to be out in the middle of nowhere. Um, at night, uh, I think psychologically is even more intimidating because we're not creatures of the nighttime and our vision is not adapted such that we see as well at night as most mammals do. And uh, it's a lot of it is the fear of the unknown. You know, you're in this place, it is a vast wilderness, what's out there? You know, you just don't know because you can't see. If it's a warmer day in the afternoon and the birds have settled down, you're not even hearing any birds. If the wind's not blowing through the trees, there is no no noise at all. And then, you know, where, how often do you go somewhere you don't hear anything? Well, certainly not in town.